Hello there, Dark Paraders, and welcome to a whole new month of, uh, of episodes here on the Dark Parade. And this is a, a, a real, you know, choose the method of your destruction kind of situation, because unlike January, January was a, a month all about movies I wanted to talk about, and now it, it's time to turn the tables. And February is a movie made up of recommendations from the listeners. And we are starting off with one from uh, Alan McPherson, who, you know, as you'll hear in this discussion that uh, you're about to listen to with Gary Hill, uh, I had been recommended this movie a number of times, and then, you know, this format uh, brought the situation to a head. And so we watched the uh, the film White God, which is an uh, uh, un-Hungarian film uh, about uh, uh, an abused animal, so I will tell you up front. The discussion of this movie includes, uh, you know, some talk of, of animal abuse. Uh, so if that is a thing that you absolutely cannot listen to, then you have been duly warned. Although I will say that uh, most of the violence with the animals happens off screen. It is more implied than direct, but it is there. And I would be lying to you if I said different. But uh, despite the inclusion of that, uh, it, it was a really interesting movie to discuss, uh, heavily allegorical, of course, and, uh, and, you know, we'll get into it here in a minute. In fact, I'll just, uh, shut up and let the, uh, the show begin. Thank you for joining us. And, uh, here's my conversation with Gary Hill about the Hungarian fable about animal abuse and maybe how we abuse each other, uh, white God. And as promised... Here is the, uh, the, the Ayatollah of Podcastola, uh, one of the, one of the, the stalwarts, one of the original, like, founding members of Legion Podcast does, I don't know, five, six shows, something like that, but, uh, a busy guy, to say the least, uh, and, and a first-timer, strangely a first-timer here on Dark Parade, uh, the, the inimitable... Gary Hill, how are you, sir? I'm fine. It's the second time that I've been on here because I did Night of Demons two with you. Um, oh shit, that's right, man. My head is broken. Sorry. Yeah, that, that's that's all the shows sinking in your brain, like, like just like me. So you, you you forget stuff all the time. Yeah, and I'll be the first to like forget that I've done a show with somebody. And as because especially with all the summer series stuff, like I'll have recorded with someone on one of those, and I'm like, oh, this is our first time recording. And they're like, motherfucker, this is the second time that we've we've recorded together because we were on that summer series thing. And I'm like, oh yeah, those are a blur. I'm, you know, doing nothing but drinking grain alcohol and, uh, you know, huffing paint during those summer series sessions. But uh, yeah, so. The sophomore appearance, uh, which, yeah, I, I can't believe I forgot Night of the Demons 2, because that's my favorite. Um, but we are in the throes of Listener Request Month here on the Dark Parade. And the uh, the film in question uh, f to kick off the, uh, the Listener Request Month is a movie called White God. Which is one uh, from Alan McPherson. He had recommended it to me in the past. And then when he recommended it yet again. When I kind of put the call out for uh, for films for the listener request month. I was like, alright, I gotta do it. I, You know, not only do I have to do it for, uh, you know, Alan. Because he has asked me to watch this a number of times. But because I genuinely wanted to watch it. I, it's It sounded like a really interesting premise. And I, I know for a fact that you had not seen this either. Nope. And so this is first time watches for both of us. And, you know, we'll get into our, our feelings on the movie as we go through it. But um, w w let me ask you this. When you, the movie was over, what mood were you in? Um, so, so many feelings. I don't even know. Sad, uh, re relieved, you know, m more relieved because what, what poor uh, Hagen goes through in this movie and the ending that you got was 
was was happy in a way, but she didn't know what was going to happen next. Because uh, look, we'll get into that with the plot, all that stuff. But you know, you were hoping that he was going to be okay, but you know, maybe not. He was going to be okay. Sure. Yeah. There are no guarantees uh, at the end of this movie as to the fate of these animals. Uh, but all right. So let, let's dig into this uh, plot wise here. Uh, which is, all, as always, stage one of the Dark Parade. Um, so th- the initial setup is you've got a young girl named Lily, and she has a dog named Hagen, and her mother is dumping her on her father. The, they're divorced, obviously. And the the father, A, not super crazy about the daughter coming to say, and B certainly not crazy about her bringing a dog in because there is a law that has been passed that if you have a mixed breed dog, then you have to pay like a fine or just this extra fee. And also the guy's building is not super pet friendly and et cetera, et cetera. Basically this dad does not want any piece of Hagen. Um, you, you could say he's Hagen don't. (laughs) <laughs> that's a good pun right there because yeah yeah <laughs> and yeah and and so uh it's a mongrel fee i think is what they call it uh that the hungarian government has has imposed and he like he initially is like look i'll just buy you a purebred dog if that's what you want and she's like no 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 i want Hagen. and Hagen is my dog and I know, I know you are a dog owner. I am a recent dog owner. And I mean, it's, there is something magical about the relationship between a dog and its owner where very quickly you're like, well, this is my dog. And, and it doesn't hurt that dogs are just the most like, you know, uh, uh, selfless kinds of animals for the most part. They're just, you know, a bundle of love with fur. Um, and all they want is to please you and make you happy and stuff. And, you know, I, I, like I said, I haven't had a dog for very long, but at this point, I love my dog. Um, I had, I had to, uh, when I was working recently, I had to board him because he, I haven't had him long enough that I trust him to stay by himself for long stretches of time. And so I, I end up having to take him to a, a kennel to board him for a few days. And I felt like the, the vacuum of not having Johnson around just for those two or three days was like striking. Where it was like, wow, I have really gotten attached to this dog very quickly. And, and when I picked him up, like he just lost, he flipped his shit because, you know, that's how dogs are. They're like, oh my God, you're back. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, immediately this movie does a good job of hooking you because you're like, if you've ever owned a dog in your life, immediately you're like, oh, right. Yeah. You don't want some replacement dog. You want your dog. Your dog is awesome. Other dogs suck. Yeah, this is a hundred percent true. I mean, I mean, um, I'm a cat owner currently we, Darla, unfortunately, uh, passed away, but there, there is that moment where every time I would come home she'd be at the top of the stairs. She's like my wife in a way. Cause she's giving me that look like, you know, where you been? Mm-hmm. Who you been talking to? You know, it was always that look, but yeah, nothing to replace, you know, your animal. I, I, cats are the exact opposite. I love my cats, but they are assholes. And you, you occupy space and they're in their space and they'll let you know it too. You know, Oh, for sure. Yeah, it, like I, I'm the same way. I've got I've got a couple of cats and a dog, um, so it's it's a real menagerie that I've got around here these days. And yeah, I, I like like you said, love my cats. My cats are cool. Uh, one in particular is a, a great cat and uh, is is more personable and more affectionate than most cats, but. It wasn't until I got a dog that I was like, oh, you're still kind of a dick. Uh, <laughs> I, I appreciate the fact that Tully's more of a jerk than I ever uh, had. had I, like, I hadn't r- wrapped my head around that quite yet. And then Johnson came along and, you know, Johnson is just, like, 
all I want you to do is pet me, rub my belly, and take me on a walk. And if you do that, I will never leave your side. And, uh, and he's, he's a treat. But, um, but yeah, so the, you know, the movie does start you off in that place where you're like, oh, well, this is a girl in her dog story. And this is a good time. <laughs> you know, at least for the, for the beginning. But so, um, there, there's a bit where, uh, when they realize like, oh, we got to sleep in the same room. And the father is like, I'm not sleeping in the same room with this dog. Like that, that's an animal. You like that dog in the bathroom. And so she ends up sleeping in the bathroom along with the dog instead of with her dad, which, you know, again, I get, uh, <laughs> but, and also the dog was kind of howling when, uh, when not with Lily. And, um, yeah, so it's, it, you know, the, the setup obviously is this father is going to get rid of this dog if at all possible. And Lily try because she's, she's hip to this as well. Like she understands, Hey, if, if my father gets his way, poor Hoggins go into the shelter or something and, and potentially is going to get killed. And so she ends up basically taking Hagen with her everywhere, including this music class where she hides uh, Hagen in like a closet. And at first everything's cool, even though there's a shitty kid in the orchestra with her that's like, did you bring your dog? That dog's going to fuck everything up. I don't, I, why did you do this? You, you know, this is going to go wrong. And she's like, shut up, my dog is awesome. He, he would never do that. But of course, you know, dog's gonna dog. And he, he does, in fact, you know, make some noise and bust out this closet and run around. And the, uh, the music teacher essentially gives Lily an ultimatum, which is you can either be in this orchestra or you can have, you can be with your dog, but you cannot do both at the same time. So that dog does not come back here or you don't come back here. And so she quits. She quits the orchestra. Um, I mean, he's, he's not J.K. Simmons and Whiplash, this teacher. He's just kind of saying, you're here to be at this conservatory, you know, to be basically uh, one of the best musicians. I, I imagine in the, I imagine that, that kind of place, like a Juilliard kind of deal. And and the dog, there's a red dog in there. Sure. It's not, I mean, he is kind of an asshole. You're right. It's not like, well, that dog is not on my tempo. You know, he doesn't pull that on him, but he's, he's still kind of an ass. Uh, but maybe it's just cause I'm like, ah, eh, let the dog stay. Um, but yeah, so they end up just kind of roaming the streets for a little bit until Lily's father finds them. And he essentially forces her to abandon the dog. Um, you know, like he, he puts her in the car uh, they go to the, like, outskirts of the city. Hagen gets dumped. And in, like, the first scene of this movie where you're like, oh my god, what is this movie gonna do? There is that moment where Hagen is, like, chasing after Lily in the car. And you see, like, the car eventually get on a, a highway or something and take off. And you see poor Hagen, like, navigating these car-filled streets. And you're like... Oh fuck! Is this dog about to get hit? Or like it? it sh this uh, thus begins Hoggins' miserable adventure. Yeah, because let me read the plot synopsis at IMDb because this sets you up. Because this is why I read this movie because it didn't sound like it was going to be what we're going to get into. Thirteen-year-old Lily fights to protect her dog Hoggin. She's devastated when her father eventually sets Hoggin free on the streets. Still innocently believing love can conquer any difficulty, Lily sets out to find her dog and save him. Now, this seems like a homeward bound situation where, you know, if you're going to find the dog in the end of the movie, it's going to be a real tearjerker. He might be a little beat up, but he'll be okay. But no, what we're going to talk about next is, is say, it may pause this film about six times throughout the, the running time of this movie, to put it that way. Yeah, I mean, I, it's worth saying, this movie is a tough sit if you are in any way an animal person. And I know that the, the filmmakers took great pains to, you know, broadcast the message that we did not hurt a dog making this movie. 
yeah. hundred percent. Yeah, right, right at the beginning it says it. Right, like we look, we are. In fact, uh, the message is not only did we not, we not only did we not hurt any of these animals, but all of these dogs that we got from shelters, like these non-actor dogs, went to uh, good homes after. So, like, not not only did we not hurt a dog, we improved the lives of all the dogs you see in this movie. Um, but that doesn't make the the watch any less uh, like agitating. Um, but yeah, so Hagen is now roaming the city like Babe the Pig, and uh, uh, you know he finds a butcher shop. And tries to get some food there. Sees a couple of dogs eating behind the butcher shop. And almost gets, you know, cleaved by the butcher when he chases them away. Um, you've got... Uh, there's a little dog. A little a little rascally white-haired dog. That uh, ends up kind of being Hagen's pal. Who, you know, kind of shows him... Like... I'm going to uh, anthropomorphize some of this, even though the movie doesn't really go that far. But the, it, it's clear that like this white dog is like, "Hey, come with me. I'm going to show you the ropes." And you know, here's this big empty lot where a bunch of dogs will come to get water and occasionally food. Um, but you know, Hagen is still on the outs, uh, and and Lily, meanwhile is, of course, terrifically upset. She's making flyers, trying to find her dog. But um, there's a whole scene with uh, Lily, uh, or I'm sorry, not Lily, but with Hagen and a bunch of the other dogs at this kind of quarry or this empty lot where the dog catchers come. Yeah. And start chasing all the dogs and... and uh, Hagen gets away, but not every dog is quite so lucky. And a lot of them just get, you know, corralled and collared and and presumably taken to a shelter, which we'll we'll see later. But um Yeah. They they don't they don't like they don't like mutts in this community and they, they got they lost me there. Yeah, you, know, you, you get a good mutt and you know, you can love the dog forever and they just try to hang out their dog ghetto and you know get some waters and such and here they come like like the the dog catcher G men to ca capture them all you know yeah yeah and I mean we'll get into the the allegorical stuff of uh, in a minute but yeah so once Hagen gets away from the dog catchers he ends up kind of rolling up on this homeless dude. And at first, it's like, oh, is this homeless guy? Because the homeless guy says, like, oh, look, both of us are castaways. And I think the idea is that this guy is uh, Roma, and and which is a group of, of people uh, colloquially referred to as gypsies. But um, they're, they're from the Roma culture and are generally looked down upon in Hungary based on the research that I did. So that... It's basically one castaway being found by another castaway. And for a second watch of this movie, I was like, oh, is are they going to befriend each other? And then maybe, you know, Hagen works his way back to Lily or something. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. This is this is where Gary gets upset. You know, the, this, this next part for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. So the next phase of the movie is this homeless guy selling Hagen to um, essentially a guy who who deals in um, fighting dogs. And Hagen clearly is not a fighting dog, and when this, this dude comes to buy a, a dog to train, um, Hagen gets purchased, and, and the guy's like, look, this dog has never fought in its life. Like, you can tell he's got a collar. This ain't a fighting dog. And uh, the guy who buys him is like, no, no, no. I can make a fighting dog out of this dog. And so, sure enough, he takes him to uh, his home where Hagen is then trained. And by trained, I mean beaten, starved, shot up with steroids, forced, basically forced to become an attack dog by by means of abuse 
just just picture a Rocky montage, but she's just really angry when it's all over because this will make you really angry just because you have to watch the development of this this lovely, loving mutt, you know, couldn't be a nicer dog in the world, that turns into this fight-or-flight vicious white dog, you know? Yeah, like his teeth are filed down into points. Mm. I mean, it's just, right, it's just... Like, the camera does a good job of cutting away before you see the worst shit, because obviously they did not really hurt this dog. No, they didn't. But it's still just heart-wrenching, because like you said, this is like, this is your faithful mutt, this is your faithful companion, having been ripped away from his owner, and now being forced to become kind of monstrous. And it's it, it. Oh my god! It this is such a tough movie to watch, and these scenes in particular are real bad. But the the worst comes when after this Rocky montage of dog fighting training, he is yeah. he is taken to his first fight, where he is forced to to fight another dog. Um, Hagen, of course, wins, but it's it's bloody and it's vicious and. I, again, one of those things that you're like, I know this goes on in the world, and it's one of the reasons that we as a species don't make a lot of sense on paper. Uh, when, when, like, dog fighting is right up there with, like, genital mutilation for religious purposes. Of, like, oh, this is just something we do to each other and to, and to the, the lower animals because we're just kind of fucked up as a species. Yeah, yeah, that that's 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 the dark side of humanity right there. It's not just oh, this one made me angry on social media because you said this thing about that person. It, it, this is uh, this is stuff that really happens, and this is stuff that really upsets me, and this is the stuff that you know makes pit bulls deemed a bad breed because you could make them mean, but they're not all mean, which makes me you know sad that people think they're all mean. And um, yeah, no, pits are actually. You know, despite the reputation, pits, in my experience, are really sweet, affectionate dogs. And and the the idea of them being mean is because they are trained to be attack dogs and guard dogs and shit like that. And it doesn't matter the breed. If you train a dog to be vicious, it will be vicious. Because, um, it'll be, you know, that's the sad fact of, of domesticating dogs is that... Most dogs, most breeds of dogs, have baked into their DNA an innate desire to please their owner. And whatever behavior the owner demands of the dog is the behavior that they're they're going to want to engage in because they want to please their master. And that's the thing that is is kind of heart wrenching about it is because like I don't I make no demands of my dog. My dog is lays around and sleeps and farts and goes on walks and you know in the grand scheme of things if i were reincarnated as the dog that i have now ain't a bad life but they're you know uh who was it michael vick going back a couple of decades uh but you know was like a famous nfl quarterback that got all kinds of busted for participating and his family i think was kind of deep in it of uh a fighting dog ring. And it's like, man, that is up there. Like, I understand that dogs aren't people and killing a dog is, does not have, carry the same weight as killing a person. But if you are engaged in the, like the systematic abuse of animals like that, man, you got to do some time, which he did in fairness, which he did. Yeah. I have opinions about Michael Vick, but like you said, he, I don't know, I, don't, I don't, didn't really read that far into how much how far he was into that, but he was into that apparently. And yeah, I can't I can't get with people who who think that's a form of entertainment. And I, I've always said that people are people, and I think if live public executions were a thing in prime time, people would tune right in. And much like people come to dog fights and, and cock fights, and you know, boom bull fights to a lesser extent but they, they still abuse the bulls as well in those fights and you know right yeah like traditionally the at the end of the bullfight the uh the uh toreador 
will kill the bull. And it's like, man, this, again, it, it, I, I'm just a, an animal lover at heart. And the idea that any entertainment can be had from, from, you know, killing a defenseless animal, like I'll eat a burger. I understand that there is a line there of like, well, you know, we're kind of treating cows really shitty to get a hamburger, but you know, there, there is, uh, there's less personality in a cow than in a dog. And I say that as someone who sees cows on the daily and they are not charming creatures the way that dogs are <laughs> you know as, as a wise man once said uh personality goes a long way <laughs> when it comes to killing animals um anyway uh don't trip on the soapbox all the way out but yeah so Hagen ends up going through the uh, the this grinder of a dog fight wins and while the the guy who trained him and is now owning Hagen um, is kind of collecting his money and kind of getting muscled by some dudes that apparently he owes some money to. Um, also, th I, I think they refer to him as Roma as well in this scene, uh, that, that that's his background also. But at any rate... They're like, well, you're going to give us this dog because you owe us some money and we know you and you're just going to fuck up and, and waste this opportunity anyway. So you might as well give us the dog because we'll at least, you know, treat him right and and make him useful. Uh, but, by which they be, of course, you know, fight him until he dies. But when they look around, Hagen has split. Um, he takes off. Uh, but unfortunately he's not running back to Lily. He ends up kind of falling into the clutches of the dog catchers that we met earlier. And now he is taken to the pound. So, you know, not quite out of the frying pan into the fire, but it ain't much of an improvement. But still, you know, when he goes there, you know, they can see he's... He's damaged for, from the fight, so they put him in a cage by himself. So that it goes back to the whole. You see so many dead dogs in this movie. They're they're they're, they're fake, fake dead dogs, of course. But the discarding of him, he, even when he, you know he's he's there, to the point of when they they're giving all the dogs kibble. He, he, you don't want him, man. He just he just wants to he wants to die or be free. You yeah. Know? And so while. Hagen is kind of chilling in the pound. Um, we get some more business with Lily and her father. Um, like, there's a, a whole thing where she's sort of enamored with uh, a guy from school, and she's kind of chasing after him, but he's a little bit older, and she's she's trying to pretend to be um, a little bit older and more mature than she is. And during this flirtation... Um, she's hanging on to some pills for this guy and the party gets raided by the cops. Lily is, you know, found with drugs and taken to the police station and the father ends up showing up and being like, you know, I fucked up. I know I fucked up. Like I shouldn't have forced you to get rid of your dog. You've been, you know, obviously upset ever since then. It was a shitty thing for me to do, but the problem is I don't understand you as my daughter anymore because we don't have this relationship and I, I love you, but I have no idea how to relate to you and kind of breaks down crying with her and so forth and, and says, look, we'll leave right now. We'll go get you another dog. It does, I'll, I'll get you any dog you want. And she says, no, I don't want a dog. And she ends up kind of, you know, patching things up with her father to some degree in these scenes. There's a part of that scene that really scared me, though, because the, the first line, you know, when he, when he sits down and you can tell he's just exhausted, Yeah, you know, he chooses, like, to shake hands with her, like, kind of like to start over in a way or to say goodbye in a way, because the line he says is something along the lines of it, it's it's tough to, to, you know, lose somebody you love or something like that. Mm-hmm. And it seems to, to me, anyway, that 
he thinks that she really fucked up real bad and he, he, he can't be around her anymore. But yeah. he's, 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 he's talking about Hagen, though, obviously. You find out, like, a, like a minute later, obviously, you know. For yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, it, there. Yeah, there is that moment because I I remember thinking the same thing in that scene of like, oh shit, he's just gonna ditch this poor girl, and she's gonna end up on the streets with Hagen. They're gonna end up dogfighting each other, um, in the pit. But uh, but yeah, she ends up kind of getting uh, somewhat reacquainted with her father, and um, their relationship is is not perfect but better and she's gonna go back to uh be in the the orchestra and the this is where i think the the music teacher was real shitty where he's like while she's apologizing he's still giving her shit about the dog and it's like man like this ain't easy for anybody to kind of eat crow like this so how about you just let things be cool the dog was a real problem, though, according to him, though. It just, it's, uh... Yeah, I, yeah, I know. But, the, again, that is the <laughs> thing. Right, that just seems real shitty. Uh, oh, it is. I'm, I'm just making, like, a raw, like, mean generalization. Like, you know, the dog is a distraction. Get yeah. rid of it. Shoot, it. shoot it in the head now, you know? Right, right. And, uh, yeah, again, we'll get into this and hear it on, on the other side of the plot. But, um, yeah, so... <laughs> They're back to Hagen in the pound. Um, there is like this female administrator who doesn't seem terrible, but also she has kind of a rough job, which is uh, there are all these dogs. There's this law that's been passed that all these mutts, uh, these non purebred uh, dogs need to be either paid for or destroyed and nobody wants them because they cost extra. And so, you know, she's having to put dogs down left and right. And there's a really strange scene where there's a bunch of dogs in a room that almost looks like a gas chamber. And I was like, oh, shit, is there about to be, like, Auschwitz for dogs in this movie? But instead, they're just watching Tom and Jerry while she is putting another dog to sleep in the background. But it, it, it definitely lets you know, oh, you know... Hagen is probably not far from death at this point. No, like I said, she put him in a cage by himself because he was injured and she he deemed, you know, nobody would want him. So yeah. And uh so at at a certain point, one of the dog catchers corners Hagen. And Hagen, who has been trained to be a killer, finally strikes out. And ends up just ripping the throat out of this dude. Yeah. And uh, ends up busting through the cages. And now Hagen and a bunch of other dogs that have been held in, in these pens are on the loose. And they, you know, like trample the lady who runs the pound on their way out. And there is a scene of just mass chaos as these dogs run roughshod through the streets of this Hungarian town. Like, trapping people in cars, running over them, trampling them. I mean, it's... It's a dog apocalypse. And, and Hagen is the general, man. Which is, um... Yeah, they got a real Pied Piper theme going on. Especially through the last act of this movie. Yeah, oh, for sure. Hagen is, is definitely in charge because Hagen, it, this is where it just becomes like a revenge movie with Hagen as as the wronged uh, animal where he goes to the butcher and the butcher gets et by a bunch of dogs. Then they go to the, the guy who trained Hagen. And uh, in in an almost slasher scene, Hagen stalks this dude and murders him. Um, then, like, and Lily comes out of the uh, concert while all this is going on, you know, in the streets of the city, and realizes, like, oh shit, dogs have 
have done run amok. And um, I think it's when, is it when she sees the news report or something? And she kind of realizes like, oh, Hagen is leading the charge here. And if Hagen is settling scores, that means her father is on the menu. Yep. I Be- think I think it was when she, she, she saw the, the butcher... Um you know, murdered yeah. by the dogs, and then she 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 heard the news report. That's when she put two and two together that Hagen is he's not he's not a he's not a hack boy anymore. You know, he's still a good boy, but he's not a hack boy. You know. Yeah. So she ends up having to go to the slaughterhouse where her father works. <laughs> FYI, he's a dude who inspects meat, um, and basically tells him like, hey. You, you are in serious trouble because Hagen is leading all these dogs and because you threw him out on the street he's going to come for you. And the father is like, you know, obviously skeptical of this. But then all of a sudden a bunch of dogs are showing up at the slaughterhouse. So he basically grabs a flamethrower and um, as he is prepared to call the police, you know, who are, you know, stretched thin, to say the least, because of the dog apocalypse happening. And he ends up uh, prepared to burn as many of these dogs alive as he can uh, before, you know, potentially getting taken out uh, himself. But... Lily instead goes out into the street where she greets all these dogs coming toward her. And she sees Hagen, she calls his name, he he kind of growls at her, and then comes a little closer and uh, certainly makes all the overtures like Hagen is about to murder his former owner, Lily. You know, to, to be fair though, at this point, you know, and all the stuff that Hagen has been through, he has no reason to trust anybody. Including his former owner, you know, because humanity has failed Hagen in, in lots of ways throughout the runtime of this movie. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is not... There, There is no shade being thrown at Hagen for potentially murdering this girl. Like, I get it. But uh, she whips out her trumpet that Hagen has heard her play a number of times. Um, and she plays... Uh, technically, it is Hungarian Rhapsody Number no. Two by Franz Liszt is the uh, the music that she plays, and as she plays, Hagen sits and then lays down, as do all the other dogs behind him. They take a cue from him, yeah, because that it's it's known earlier in the movie in a scene that when she's trying to calm Hagen down in the bathroom, she's playing the trumpet for him that 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 calms him and. That's that's what it took, and you know the general told his troops to stand down, and yeah, in this case lay down, you know. Yeah, and and she does too. She sits down to finish the rest of her her performance, and then when that is over, she lies on her belly on the ground just like the dogs. And <laughs> one of the guys from the the slaughterhouse comes out and, and asks her father like. Hey, should we call the cops? Like, they need to come shoot all these dogs. And he's like, nah, not yet. Don't do it yet. I mean, don't not do it, but don't do it yet. And then the father goes out as well and and lays down beside uh, his daughter. And, And that's kind of the last scene of the movie is the two of them lying on their belly on the ground you know, sort of surrounded by all these dogs that are also lying down on their belly. And like you said, the ending isn't, it's not necessarily a happy ending because you can't imagine that the end of this is they get to take Hagen home and all these other dogs live happily ever after too. Like somebody is going to come and destroy these animals because they cannot be allowed to get out of line like this. Like it's, it's like the same reason you kill a bear after it's killed a hiker. You know, it's got a taste for it now. I would mention, you know, when the dogs get loose, 
you know, once the police are called, they go like full SWAT on these dogs, and they're, they're genocide of these animals. They're, they're shooting these animals to death, including the part where, um, which is the most heartbreaking death of the film, if I figured, when little uh, Hagen's little buddy mm-hmm. is trying to lead Lily to go to go find Hagen. She's riding her bike. He's running in front of her, and they shoot this little dog. And I'm like, fuck you. What's this little dog doing to anybody? You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, oh, uh, yeah, a bunch of dogs get shot by the cops uh, on their way through the town. Although there is that moment where Hagen kind of does the dipsy doodle on him to distract him in one direction while all the <clears> dogs <throat> come from the other one. Mm-hmm. So, eh, it's something. But yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, dog ain't no match for uh, semi, semi-automatic weapons. I was waiting. That that was the part where he said, you know, you don't have to be a real happy ending for Hagen or any of these dogs because they could have busted in with their 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 vans and their guns and just annihilated every dog on the on the on the lot there. And you, you don't see that. And I'm grateful for the ending sure. that we got. It's just you know, it's very open ended in that way. Like none of these dogs are gonna live. None of them, you know. Right, it's hard to imagine given the tone of the movie. Although, you know, the, like the, the implication is that both the father, I mean certainly Lily, although Lily wasn't the the problem child to begin with, but but her father seems to understand like, oh yeah, well, there is a there is a commonality between us and these animals that, you know, if we mistreat them eventually, they are going to quite literally bite us in the ass. This is sure, or a rip of jugular, which is, you know, there was the, the point in the film where I said, well, I guess, uh, I guess Hagen's all the way gone now, you know, that, yeah. that's the point of the film where I said that, and what you get at the end is, is, is very heartwarming to me, because, you know, you, you didn't want that for him, but he's, he had a rough go, you know, throughout the entirety of this movie, and, yeah, yeah, go, it, go 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 Hagen, man. You know, I, I was I was so happy. You know, at the end of this movie. Yeah, it's like you said. Uh, you 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 go on a journey with this dog, where you're certainly sympathetic towards him, and when he's murdering all the people that you know put him in this position, you're really happy about it. But also just because of the rules of movies, it's like, well, he can't get away with this, you know. And and I'm glad you don't see whatever comeuppance there is for his vengeance. I'm glad we don't see that. And, you know, it, depending on your level of optimism, I suppose that you could walk away from this movie thinking like, oh yeah, well, he and Lily are back together and they just go home and the dad loves Hagen now. But in reality, they're living with a killer, you know? <laughs> like like Hagen has, t- has tasted the sweet, sweet uh, human flesh and will never be the same. I mean, just psychologically, I mean, what, what what took him to rip the guy's jugular out was a motion with a, with a leather strap that, that the the dog fighter was doing to make the dog run faster on the treadmill. Yeah. And so any, the psychological damage to this animal could be irreplaced, it, 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 un, unfixable. I and mean, I watched Pitbulls and Proleys one time, and you'll see that there's dogs on there that they just can't fix and that they have to be put down. And, you know, Hagen, I th- unfortunately, could be one of those dogs that cannot be fixed. No, no right. matter, to be a normal society, he cannot be fixed. Um, all right, well, let's let's move on to phase two of the Dark Parade, in which we discuss the cast of this movie. Um, you, uh, you really can't talk about uh, the movie without talking about the, the dog actors in this movie. And uh, Hagen, pretty good. There's some really impressive dog acting going on in this movie. There really is. Um, that's great. I think uh, Sophia Sota, I think is how you pronounce her name, who plays Lily. I think she's really good in this movie. And uh, Sander Zoster, who are Zoter, is the father, Daniel. And I think, like... He's an asshole, but he does a great job at being that asshole. And I think that that emotional scene that they have but the, between the two of them at the police station is really well done. And it's really tender and it's kind of raw and honest and, and that kind of thing. So I really think 
I like the performances are very good, although it is somewhat hard to judge because of course everything is in a different language. <laughs> so, so, you know, it's tough to kind of feel the vibe. It, it, it could be that a lot of the dialogue was stilted or something, and there's just no way I've got an ear for that. But, mm. I mean, you know, the, the story was there, the emotions were there. I mean, you did the, your small amount of research and, and about the Romani people and stuff, and that, that, that helped you understand certain things. I didn't. I know that those people are shunned by by many cultures, and I, I didn't need to go deep dive anything. I just know I, I saw what I saw, and am I gonna watch it again within the next five months? Probably not. Because <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a ride, man. It's definitely a ride. Yeah, it's not fun. It's not a fun movie to watch. It, it's it's good, but it is definitely affecting and it, it, it's it's not a movie that you walk away from feeling better than when you started it <laughs> you're gonna think like oh we are just a terrible terrible species and the things we do to other species of animals uh, ought to be against the law and in some places it's not and that's uh, horrifying um but yeah right, speaking of research let's get into a little bit of the the uh the recurring themes of the movie and ultimately the like white God is an allegory for sort of race relations. And w in Hungary, Gary, there is a political party known as the Jobbik or Jobbik party. I'm not sure if that is a hard or soft J, but, uh, at any rate, they're not, uh, they are not a party that is in power, but as a political party, they get somewhere around 15 to 20% of the vote. And they are super right wing. You know, they're anti Semitic, they're anti Roma. One of the guys uh, who was running for office as part of this political movement had done a DNA test to prove that he was purebred Hungarian and had no, had, didn't have a drop of Jewish blood or a drop of Roma blood in his body. And in Hungary as a whole, again, based on the research I've done, if you are Hungarian, please contact me, correct me. I will certainly retract the following statement, but hung, Hungary as a whole seems to have had a lot of issues with this kind of like anti-Semitism and anti, um, you know, just uh, basically anyone other. And, you know, the United States got, got plenty of problems in that arena as well, but Hungary is no different and, and has a pretty substantial political party. Uh, quite frankly, not unlike the United States, that is very much about, sort of racial identity and racial purity and that kind of stuff. And so white God is very clearly a movie about that, that, you know, you substitute, you know, Jewish people or the Roma people for the dogs. And that's the lesson we're supposed to take away, which is, you know, I mean, at the, if you keep mistreating this minority of people, eventually that is going to come back like that the, people can only be abused for so long before they lash out and and nobody wants that because it puts you know it's one thing to be a minority in a country um it's another thing to be a a minority that is made the villain in a country um and and that's the kind of shit that leads to violence and you know whether it's you know Northern Ireland whether it's Hungary whether it's here in the United States like it is not difficult to see that if you continue to oppress a group of people eventually that will explode and uh, in this case it was dogs and but like I said the dogs here are just a stand-in for other cultures um, but also the, the end of the movie, I think, speaks to the idea of, like, we just have to recognize our common humanity. 
that we're all essentially the same. We're all essentially animals living on a rock hurtling through space. And if if we take that broad view of things that we are we have more in common than we don't, then maybe that violence can be subverted. Uh, or that's my take on it. Uh, like I said, if you are Hungarian or you are Gary and have a different idea, then uh, by all means, let me know. But that's what I got out of it. No, I, I, I wholeheartedly agree. You know, it's, it's uh, also, you know, there's people, those people being, being discarded by the, their, I guess their, their um, I'm trying to look for words here that I can't find. But the dogs are very representative of that too. These they, they, that are mutts, mutts basically are not are not allowed. They're a real, the real taboo thing. Mm -hmm. And I can't get down with that or systematic racism or exclusion of people or exclusion of dogs or anything like that. So I I I I'll, uh, agree with everything you said. And like I said, hungry. Uh, speak to us if we're uh, we're off. You know? Right. Yeah. 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 I look. I'm I'm wrong a lot, but that is I, based on the research I did uh, about this movie because I was like this uh, the the way that they talk about the Roma people in this movie eh, it's got to be something going on there, and it seems seems to be the case. Um, but uh, enough highfalutin themes. It's time that we get down to some final thoughts and some ratings of this thing. Uh, so Gary. As always, we uh, rate these movies on a scale of 1 to 5. Half stars are allowed, not quarter stars, because we are not monsters. And uh, what what was your big takeaway, uh, and or what have we not said about White God, and how would you rate this? Well, we said a lot about White God, and, and I, I would recommend it, you know, because it is, it is a great film. From beginning to end, it's a great film. For... for, for the reasons that I'll give right now that it made me feel a lot of emotions, you know, you know, because everything, every time you thought something was going to go good, it went horribly bad. And then every time you thought that, you know, oh, things are getting better, it got worse. And then the end that she got really, it was almost like a relief in a way because it, it cut, it cut, it cut the movie right where it should have been cut. And, you can interpret what's going to happen next, and that's that's that can be a dangerous thing. But um, not recommended for everybody. Like it says in the beginning of the film, that you know, they didn't hurt any they hurt any real animals, and that they, they, all of them are were strays. They have good homes now, so God bless them for that. Um, I think Wes Anderson did, did that for uh, some of the dog, you know, actors or inspiration for Isle of Dogs. They had like. 12 dogs or something that they brought in or 15 dogs from shelters and they all got good homes too mm -hmm. and um this this is a lot more dogs than all the dogs obviously that they got for that and this is like hundreds of dogs but um it, it'll raise your spirits it'll break your heart it, it is a four out of five for me though i i I'd, I'd, I'd watch it again just not not right away it's not saying hey let's watch that again this feel-good movie of the year about a dog looking for its owner because it's not. Yeah. So, uh, four out of five. Uh, I, yeah, I agree. I, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, four out of five for me as well. Um, yeah, I agree with everything you said. It, it is not an easy movie to sit through. It is, it's frustrating and heartbreaking and all that stuff. Um, so, yeah, it, I don't know that I'll go back to it again anytime soon. Um, and it's, and like you said, it's tough to recommend, you know, it's not one of those movies where you can be like, you're, you haven't seen white God. Why well, sit down, let's cra crack a couple of beers. I'll get the popcorn. Um, but it's, it's very good. And, it, and if like, <laughs> if our conversation has piqued your interest and you think, oh, I might like to watch this movie, then you should. But if you have a tough time watching animals abused in movies to the point that that is a deal breaker for you, just be aware that that is a thing. Um, it is not, um, it's not explicit, but it is certainly a thing that happens in this movie. Um, well, Gary, that brings us to the final stage in our journey in the dark parade. 
which is three things that you may not know about the movie White God. And so uh, we're, this this is a little more upbeat. This is just feel good kind of stuff. Uh, for example, Gary, White God has uh, the record for the most dogs in a movie, which is probably not surprising given the last 30 minutes of this movie, but it's true. Uh, 274 dogs were used in the making of this movie. That means they all got homes, guys. That, that's, that's not a bad thing. Yeah. yeah, which brings us to number two, which is that all the, the dogs that were used in the movie, other than uh, Hagen, which we'll get to in a minute, were from local shelters, uh, were trained for the movie, and then by the end of the movie... Um, and because like there were all these individual trainers working with all these dogs and stuff, um, every single one of them was adopted and found a home. So in a movie that is about dog abuse and so forth, end of the day, all of them went home. All of them went, went home with a, a trainer and, and presumably led very happy and long lives, I hope. Um, and then finally, Gary... Our last uh, bit of trivia is uh, Hagen himself was played by not one, but two dogs named Luke and Bodie that were found in Arizona and were about to be taken to a shelter when they were discovered and uh, trained as, as acting dogs and uh, were, were saved um, by Hollywood or, you know, whatever passes for that in Hungary. But yeah, they're, they're professional acting dogs, Luke and Bodie, uh, saved from the shelter, um, because they were actors. So. And got second and third billing in the credits in the closing credits. So for sure. Yeah. 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 Uh, pretty good names too. Bodie and Luke are good dog names. Uh, I, I like all of that. So, um, yeah, so that is White God. Thank you, Alan, for the recommendation. Uh, it is a good movie. It is a, a, a tough movie. Uh, I will expect your uh, explanation and or apology for making me feel terrible about human beings and, and feel so uh, sad for dogs that are made up and, and were not real. So... Stop yeah, I, I I told Chef Al to go fuck himself a good four or five times during this movie. Just not not him, per, you know, because I don't like the man because I had to watch this movie and then make you feel feelings about this movie. You know? Yeah, yeah, it's not cool. Not cool, Alan. Uh, I I don't like to feel my feelings ever. And uh, I, I appreciate you, but I hate your fucking guts in a little. little in, in a slight way. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Knock it off. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, a, a really, a really good movie. And if you haven't seen it, you know, it, you have been warned as to, uh, what is contained in the film. But if that sounds like something that you can handle, uh, I definitely recommend it. So, um, Gary, speaking of handling it, let's handle some, some business here. Um, where can people find more out of you? And also what are you up to these days? I'll make it real simple. Okay, you oh. guys can look for all my shows under the Cine Beef podcast feed. Right now, you can find them all there because they're all mo mostly there. Anything recent that I've put out in the past, I don't know, a couple of years or so, have been going on the same feed, uh, which is Cine Beef podcast, my, my show that's going on nine years now. That's, I guess, that the, 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 the flagship show, as children would call it, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, myself... Suzanne, Iris, and whoever else wants to come on, mm -hmm. uh, do that multi genre show. Um, Burning for Springwood, uh, Freddy's Nightmares, um, Retro, as the kids call it. Um, we watch the episodes so you don't have to review them. We're almost done with season one. So when season two is over, we'll move on to something else. Maybe something fun. Um, I don't even know what it's going to be. We'll find out. We'll find out when we get there. Two Jig Minimum Commentaries is coming back. Um, maybe recording on Sunday. I haven't decided yet. Um, we'll, we'll do something final. I'll let it be a surprise for the, the comeback of that show. 
what it's gonna be. This could be something you know and hopefully you love. Uh, Blood from the Core could be found on Legion Patreon and Legion Patreon only. Myself and Derek Bourgeois do New York based horror, thriller, and exploitation films on that show. And mm, one nice. more I'm missing. Yes, I'm sorry. Last Call of Torchies is a show I do with Lee Russell and Cameron Scott where we cover uh, the entire works of one uh, writer, director, producer, everything. I, I call him a journeyman because he does everything. Uh, Walter Hill. Um, mm. Some good stuff so far. So, so um, I know there, there's a, a few stinkers, but then those have it way later. I mean, as far as the street goes as a filmmaker, I got to give it to the man that um, I love it. Um, next episode, Duncan's going to be on. next. That one and the Patreon episode, which we always give you guys a bonus one for that, which is uh, 48 hours. And Demolition Man is the bonus. Oh, you gotta, wow. So it's going to be fun with Duncan, I think, because you don't get to talk about those films all that much, you know, action-type movies. And I know he likes them. I know he does. He just um, not, not often you get to talk about those films. So if you like Duncan's horror stuff, you get to hear Duncan talk about action action movies and buddy comedies on the next uh, two episodes of that. So look for that. Um, coming in your ear holes. Uh, record that next weekend, actually. So sometime after that. Excellent. All right. Well, uh, thanks again, my man. And uh, I will leave it there and be right back to wrap up the show. And so there you have it. That is the, uh, the, the discussion with Gary on White God. Um, I, first of all, would like to thank Gary for joining me for uh, that discussion. Also, thank you, uh, kind listeners, for sitting through, you know, a description of uh, this poor dog Hagen uh, being taken through the ringers. And, uh, and, and sort of what that means. Um, I found the movie to be interesting. It's a movie that's definitely hung with me. Not for the, the least reason that I really enjoyed the story of all the dogs being adopted out of this movie. You know, out of a movie all about uh, animal cruelty, or at least certainly largely about animal cruelty. Um, it... it results in a story that's kind of heartwarming and so i do uh i do enjoy it on that level um and and like i said it just it, it has stuck with me as a movie that you will not soon forget it is filled with uh images and and just the trials and tribulations of Hagen. there i am uh i i it's something that i, I haven't been able to shake so uh big thanks to alan for this recommendation uh, we have more recommendations to come, of course, as well as the typical shenanigans uh, you associate with the Dark Parade. We'll have a new What You Watch in this month, a new Heart of Horror this month, um, uh, a couple of those Found Footage full episodes, uh, and then your requests in the main episode on Wednesdays. If you would like to recommend a movie, it is too late to do so for this February, but... I am always uh, kind of looking for the next thing to do. I have movies basically planned through April uh, and and through June to some degree. But at any rate, if you have some ideas of what you would like to hear covered here on the Dark Parade, you can drop me a line uh, on Twitter at Dark Parade Pod. You can also find me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Dark Parade. Uh, or you can drop me a line directly at Bo, that is B-O, at legionpodcasts.com. Um, due to some technical difficulties, uh, we did not uh, have an opportunity to do Sinister Sundays last Sunday, but, you know, uh, as the saying goes, Lord Willen and the Creek Don't Rise, we will be doing that uh, this Sunday. So that uh, happens at 5 p.m. Central Time. And I hope you're able to join us for that. So that's it. Thank you as always for listening, for rating and reviewing the show, which is really helpful if you're enjoying what you're listening to. Uh, please do so if you haven't already. And uh, Spotify allows for reviews now. So drop some five-star reviews there if, if you wouldn't mind. If you're, like I said, if you're enjoying the show, if not, then uh, don't worry about it. I get it. You don't have to do nothing just because you're, you're obligated to. You, you ought to do it because you want to. That's a valuable life lesson, everyone. Anyway, uh, we will be back on Friday with a found footage fool. 
and uh, Sunday with a Sinister Sunday. So uh, please join us for all of that. And thank you, as always, for joining the Dark Parade. We'll see you next time.